Defending is one of the most fundamental skills in football, and many of the greatest players to grace the game have been defenders. Consequently, it's definitely important for every player, whether he's a defender or not, to know the basics of the art of defending. Every player needs to be familiar with these essentials, so even if you are a midfielder or a striker, analyzing the best defenders in the world will definitely go a long way in improving your game and making you a better player. Today, we'll try to break down the secrets behind the brilliance of arguably the two best centre-backs in the world, Virgil van Dijk and Sergio Ramos. Whether it's their passing accuracy, clearances or the ability to win headers, the two almost always deliver and have therefore cemented their place in the list of the best defenders. Both of them are complete players in their own rights and have the tactical awareness and technical ability to play almost anywhere on the pitch. Their individual stats have been amazing and their remarkable consistency is what makes them truly elite. In today's video, we'll analyze their unique approach to defending and their remarkable game sense so that you guys can learn from the very best in the business. I have listed several of the most important traits that will help you in becoming a smarter footballer and also some pro tips from a legendary defender so make sure to not miss out on anything by watching till the end so that you can become a better player in the near future. But just quickly, if it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any new videos on football tactics, analysis and more. Now let's dive right into it. Paolo Maldini once famously stated that if he has to make a tackle, then he believes that he has already made a mistake. Consider the weight and strength of such a quote. It alludes to a different, more modern form of defending, which requires more intellect than the conventional, almost purely physical game. A lot of game sense is required to not only cut off passing lanes, which might be exploited by the opposition, but also to prevent shooting opportunities to try to read the game and intercept the ball by positioning themselves perfectly when a dangerous pass is played. Going to the ground should be the last resort for any player, and it should be done only in do or die situations when no other option is left. This is mainly because in case you miss the tackle, you can easily concede a goal, and if you are even a bit unlucky, a foul may even get you sent off. Here is a clip from Virgil's Southampton days, where he executes a perfectly timed tackle on Sadio Mane and prevents a certain goal. Similarly, Ramos makes a crucial tackle here and neutralizes the goal threat. This makes it pretty clear that making a sliding tackle should be reserved for only such extreme situations. Staying on your feet and anticipating the next play should be the top priority as it helps in applying pressure on the attacker so that he is forced to make a decision. A quick rule of thumb would be to try to force the opposition wide. This not only reduces the XG for the attacker, but also limits his ability to hurt you. When pushed wide, his best options would be a cross or a cutback to a teammate. Just take a look at how Van Dijk forces Mbappe to move away from goal. If you take a closer look from a different angle, it almost seems that Van Dijk feigns a tackle first to hide his intentions. Mbappe continues his run but is now pushed wide and Van Dijk makes a tackle when the time is right. The ability to read the game and make quick decisions without rushing into mistakes is an underrated aspect of defending. Proper positioning is as important for a defender as it is for a midfielder. Distribution is another very important ability. When faced with a high press or when almost all short passing options are closed, a simple punt is mostly ineffective. This is because it can easily give possession to the opposition in the form of a throw-in or an interception. The ability to resist the opposition press by either passing between the lines playing a long ball to a wide player or dropping deep to stretch the opposition through the length of the field is essential in the modern game. Both Liverpool and Real play with their defensive lines quite high up the pitch. This means that the passing ability of the back four needs to be very good. If the centre-backs lose the ball, the team can easily concede a goal. So if you are currently not good in your passing ability and your team wants to build the game from the back, you must either work on both your short and long passes or consider changing your club to one which doesn't require very technical defenders. Just take the example of Chris Smalling. He struggled a lot at United, but after his switch to Serie A side Roma, he is performing exceptionally well. He doesn't need to play a lot of passes now, and it's only his defensive contribution that is being used as a metric of his success. A defender's pace and acceleration is another underrated ability. Athleticism is a great characteristic for any player, and defenders are no exception to this. In the 2018-19 edition of the Champions League, Van Dijk clocked a higher top speed than all three of Leroy Sané, Kyle Walker and Gareth Bale. Incredible, isn't it? 
Maybe this is the secret behind Van Dijk's fabulous record of not being dribbled past even once in the Premier League for 50 games straight. In fact, Real's Adam Militao, who was at FC Porto last season, wasn't far behind these speedsters either. With a top speed of 33.3 km per hour, he ranked 15th in the list of the fastest players in the UCL. Athleticism doesn't hurt a player, no matter the position he plays at. Working on your sprint speed and agility will definitely help in improving your game, so do keep that in mind. Sometimes, situations may crop up in which you have to cover for your fullbacks, who have pushed higher up the pitch. Ramos frequently has to cover for Marcelo when the team faces a counter-attack and Marcelo's position is being targeted. Similarly, Van Dijk needs to cover for Robertson. Although it's generally the job of the CDM to do so, good players don't hesitate in making an unconventional decision depending on the situation. But this can only be done if the other centre-back is smart enough to curve for you. Otherwise, a simple run between the two centre-backs can split the defence with just a simple through ball. Blindside runs are something that almost all defenders struggle with, even Ramos and Van Dijk. Typically, these are diagonal runs made behind the centre-backs when the ball is on one side of the pitch. If the CBs are just watching where the ball is, a clever striker can exploit this. That's why it's important for centre-backs to keep checking their shoulders frequently, especially when the ball is at the wings. Scanning is as important as any technical or tactical skill and can be the difference between a mediocre player and an elite one. In fact, new research by sports experts at the University of Chichester revealed that young players would fare better if coaches spent more time training them to scan the field and less on focusing on just the ball. Both Ramos and Van Dijk are known for being huge aerial threats. While Ramos has won 2.3 aerial duels per game in the domestic league this season, Van Dijk has won 5.4. For comparison, these are the stats of other notable defenders. Almost everyone remembers Ramos's 93rd minute equaliser versus Atletico in the Champions League final. The Spaniard has scored a total of 48 headed goals in his career, while Van Dijk has scored 18. Another important thing that people generally remain quiet about is when to make tactical fouls. Sometimes even coaches don't comment on this, especially at the lower levels. My opinion on this is that tactical fouls should only be made when getting a card holds little value in comparison to conceding a goal. As a rule, I would recommend making tactical fouls only in the following situations. First, opponent holds a numerical superiority against your team. Second, opposition initiates a counter-attack and you cannot risk conceding a goal. Third, it's a high-stakes match and even a single goal or chance can change the dynamics of the whole season. Still, it's better to leave this job to forwards and midfielders, much like Guardiola City. Although Pep generally keeps his lips sealed regarding such things, it's quite evident from how his team plays. Forwards like Sadio Mane, Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling have all been guilty of this. In fact, the largest tally of fouls committed this season is also held by a forward, Aston Villa striker Wesley. So it wouldn't hurt your team if you communicate this to your forwards and your midfielders, especially if your team likes to press high. Nevertheless, an ideal defender would always intercept the ball before it reaches the target player. Fouling is never an option for such a player. Refrain from making such tactical fouls in training as it would only stall your progress as a player. Restrict such fouls exclusively to important match days. Being composed in difficult situations and staying calm, even when a player like Mbappe or Leo Messi comes dribbling at you, is definitely remarkable. But it is something that is immensely required at the top level. If you can't stay composed and rush into tackles quite easily, then this can really harm your game especially in the long run when mistakes have developed into habits. Top professionals sometimes even need to consult sports psychologists when they make a big blunder in a game and sometimes it becomes too much to take even for the top athletes. Being mentally fit is as important as being physically fit and top professionals make sure to be world class in both of these aspects. Perhaps the best thing that we can learn from Ramos and Van Dijk is that both of them are more than just defenders. They can pass the ball like midfielders, score headers like elite strikers. Before being great centre-backs, these two are great footballers and anyone who wants to be a complete player should follow suit. Now, it's time for the bonus tip from Maldini that I promised at the beginning of the video. These are actually a set of guidelines that I've compiled after watching another video that I came across during this one's production. Do note that these are specifically made for defenders in 1v1 situations but the concepts can be applied by midfielders and strikers alike. Anticipating the game can help a lot in intercepting low driven passes that come from a distance and are generally made by a deep-lying midfielder or a centre-back. 
If the striker successfully receives the ball, close him down and make sure that you don't allow him to make a forward pass. If it's a big, strong striker, don't give him any leaning opportunity or he might use it to not only protect the ball but also to turn away from you. Always try to push the player away from goal. This helps in limiting his passing and shooting options. If a player has a habit of moving away with a first touch just after receiving the ball, you must anticipate this and be ready for such situations. Generally, dribblers have this particular tendency, so knowing the opposition can be very beneficial. The link to another video of the series, How to Become a Smart Midfielder, Analyzing Frankie de Jong and N'Golo Kante is right here. The link to the aforementioned Maldini video is also given here. Do check them out regardless of the position you play at. Also, guys please subscribe if you found the video useful. Finally, thanks again for watching. Have a nice day and hope to see you again at 12 Yards Football.